Eu nem entro assim em cancer epigenetics, which is the, this chemical modifications to the DNA that helps to control gene expression. So we're interested to understand how, when a normal cell becomes a cancer cell, what uh, the process goes wrong in this uh, differentiation or deep differentiation and how the epigenetic enzymes play a role in this. So we want to have this fundamental understanding in order to develop a therapeutic approach. So we are very interested in epigenetic therapy for target these uh, modifications. And also choose a biomarker. So when the different cancer cells become different cancer types, a lung cancer, bladder cancer, and so on, we have different uh, epigenetic profiles that we can use to classify the disease, to detect the disease. So we are interested in these two approaches, the therapeutic target and the biomarker discovery. Yeah, it's uh, very interesting in the, in the terms of understand how science is doing in different places, how the funding is doing in different places. Uh, so in Brazil, was, uh, we, ha we don't have that many funding for science, so a lot of the work has been done with lower funding, so we have to be much more creative, we have to think deeper before doing the experiments. And then that opened the door for me to come to the US, which is a completely different environment to have much more funding uh, so we can actually, whatever ideas we have, we can very quickly try to test this experimentally and data analysis. So, so it's a different profile. Uh, at that time, once I was finishing my postdoc, I started to look for positions elsewhere. Uh, my main goal was to stay in North America. Initially, with the focus was to stay in the US. And then this position opened here in Toronto, and uh, I came, did the interview, and initially I, I was a bit in... in Question myself if I should come to Canada or stay in the US. I, I knew better the system in the US. I, I didn't know the system here in Canada at that time. Uh, but the environment here in Toronto is, is second to none. So it's, uh, the science is extremely strong. There's no place in the US that's so, such a good science as in Toronto. Uh, the funding at that time was relatively good. Uh, the, the colleagues here was uh, very welcoming, so everybody was excited to work together, to collaborate. So it's, it's, a, it's a much more collegiate uh, kind of uh, environment. So I was very happy to actually accept to come here. Yeah, there's some data uh, on different cancer types. So we recently published one in ATRT, so the atypical teratoid tumors. Uh, it's a brain cancer in child uh, that we show different uh, subgroups of patients have different epigenetic modifications and that's associated with survival and also to therapeutic uh, response. Well, I think the most important for grad students, and, and that's for scientists in general, is the, is the drive and the curiosity. So one is to have self-driven, so someone that is actually interested in their own project, interested to pursue their own path. Uh, and so this self-driven is the most important characteristic for me. And the other is curiosity, so it's not only whatever I give to them they will do, they also be looking for all this stuff and trying to figure out their own projects, figure out new questions to address. And I'm very open to follow different paths, so as soon as the grad student come and say, you know, we should do this, I'm very open to try and figure out. So just drive and curiosity for me is the most important features for, for anyone in science. Well, I spent some time looking the website, looking the, the PIs and the professors that are available. Uh, think about the area of research you want to do and also the personal side. So looking for professors that are, that are kind of a, committed to help the student. So, so committed to make the students move forward. So look for, so if it's a more senior professor, look what happened to the grad student that came from this professor. If it's a more younger professor, kind of looking for what he thinks or, or she thinks about uh, the mentorship. Uh, look what this professor thinks about how to move the students from point A to point B, which is the start in the grad school, what's going to do after finishing grad school. So this is uh, so not only the area of research, but also the, you're going to spend a lot of time with this uh, advisor, so you should think well and do plan well your rotation so you can have a chance to, to, to know a little bit of each one. Yeah, it was a 
Yeah, excellent time for me. I, I think it was very exciting. Uh, most of the time we spend on, on lab and research, but we have a group of another grad students that we work close together from different labs. Uh, it was very stimulating environment, so we discuss science all the time, even we go out for drink and discussing science and drinking, so it was an exciting time. Uh, it's a lot of hard work, but also a lot of fun, so I really enjoyed my time at Crutstein. <laughs>
ultimately most of the time times fail because either you cannot do a gesture surgery, you have a metastasis, you cannot do a target approach because the tumor is so heterogeneous. But if you could actually start to identify this tumor earlier and earlier, we can have a more curative approach such as radiation therapy or just surgery. So we are very interested in the possibility of identifying early by profiling the methylation in the blood. In the liquid biopsy, my closest collaborator is Scott Bratman, so he's an expert in this field. Uh, we developed the technology for profile methylation, and we have worked with him to decide what's the clinical questions, what's the clinical application that we should start to try in this, and, and what's the analysis that we should be doing. So it's a, it's a very fruitful collaboration with Scott Bratman on the cell-free DNA. On the cancer side, uh, on the therapeutic side, we collaborate a lot with Catherine O'Brien, so we're very interested in colorectal cancer and colorectal cancer stem cell. So have someone that, that's expert in this field just in the same field, it uh, improves a lot of our own research. So these are major collaborations uh, inside the Princess Margaret. Of course, a lot of collaboration with the clinicians, so the, all the ideas that we develop here, we work with Lillian Seal and Amity Oza to translate in clinical trials. So that's something we're doing, and also we work with the clinicians to have access to the biobank sample to test these approaches here. So it's a two-way uh, collaboration with the clinicians, both translating into clinical trials and also getting samples back so we can actually analyze and understand them. Well, that will open uh, the possibilities to to do what we call more big science or big data. So that would allow us to just profile much, much larger number of patients. Um, so one thing that we are very interested in right now is this circulating cell-free DNA. So it's uh, this field called liquid biopsy, where any cancer cell or any cells that are dying, they release a small piece of DNA in the circulation. So we have been interested in profiling this by methylation, by mutation, and we can use to classify cancer, to detect cancer early. Uh, but to, to train these uh, classifiers, we need a large number of samples, and for each sample is expensive. So if you have like infinite resources and infinite access to samples, because that's another question, uh, that will be something that we can start to build this large and large database, like a Google-like database for this kind of approach. Well, I have two kids and two okay. very small kids, so, it's day day. so <laughs> there's not much time besides the kids and lab. Uh, we like to go camping, so in summer we usually go camping with the kids, mm -hmm. and in the winter we like skiing a lot, so we take the kids to the mountains, and so that's something I like. In Toronto we have a problem that's mostly flat, so there's yeah. not that many places to go. Usually go every weekend to Barrie or Blue Mountain, but we always do a one or two travels to Whistler or Last few years uh, in the epigenetic field, one of the hot areas now is uh, epigenetic engineering. So using CRISPR kind of system, but fused with epigenetic enzymes. So you can very target induce methylation, remove methylation, acetylation, histone methylation. So you can actually start to look for functionality of this. A lot of the time what we study is correlation. Uh, if you have a epigenetic mark with the gene on and off, uh, but you never can remove or add the mark at a specific gene and see what's happened to that, uh, at a specific promoter and see what happened to that gene. So this is moving very fast right now. A lot of new technology are coming up. So we'll be able to, for the first time, understand better what's cause, what's consequence of these epigenetic modifications. So I think this is a very hot area right now. Uh, on the bigger picture, there's a, a lot of discussion about the What's, what is epigenetics? Uh, we usually just use the word epigenetic for every chromatin uh, uh, modification. Not all of them are epigenetics if you think in terms of uh, they are heritable during cell division. So there's a lot of discussion about uh, people just using this uh, name epigenetics without having a definition. So, so it's something that is under discussion. What's the definition of epigenetics uh, to avoid misuse? Uh, in the immunotherapy side, I think it's right now it's in the clinical trial phase. So a lot of these discoveries have been tested in clinical trials and we'll soon be able to know how, how much of this is clinically useful and how much is, is still need to be improved. So we're in that stage, in that side. Okay.
Um, I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, and good luck in the future. <laughs> no problem. Um, yeah, thank you for interviewing me. And me. For all the students, I'm always happy. My door, is, my door is always open, and I'm always happy to help whatever I can. So if you're looking for informal advice, just come and knock the door. <laughs> and I see you're on Twitter, so yeah, and I'm on Twitter, so we can also just tweet you as well. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome.